Hello everyone, um, just a little introduction to um, my last two foundation videos. Um, I tried to record the reviews for all four together this morning and uh, just didn't work. I am too chatty and too verbose uh, and way too um, mixed up and slow to fit it into 15 minutes. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to review the makeup designery and cover effects initially and then the video is going to stop and then I'm going to have the other two um, foundations in another video. So I know I say I've got four at the start of this video but it's actually only two. So if you watch that and then you can skip on to watch the, the last two and then um, ultimately I will do a wrap up video of all of these and I'll more or less give my, my humble opinion on everything and which ones I like best. So, um, yeah, so that, that's it. So enjoy this one. And uh, if you like that, watch the next. And um, I will talk to you soon. So um, keep watching. So uh, the four I have for you today are the Makeup Designery Cream Foundation with a very um, dirty looking palette. <laughs> Sorry about that. And it is in shade WB2. I have the Cover FX. Cover effects doesn't say anything on the back. It's their cream foundation anyway. Um, and it's in shade E20. I have the Illamasqua um, Rich Liquid Foundation. And that is in shade something. It's worn off. It's just that shade. And I have the Eve Pearl High Definition Dual Foundation in light. So, um, yeah, I'll go through them in order. So, um, Makeup Designery um, Foundation. I love Makeup Designery products. Uh, you probably would have seen me using and talking about their brushes quite a bit. I think their brush line is incredibly good uh, good quality. They're an, it's a quite an expensive brush line. About the same price as MAC, I'd say, comparable with MAC in price. Um, but certainly very, very much comparable in quality as well. And their brush line is quite distinctive and quite different. Um, so I'm a big fan and their eyeshadows are of really tremendous quality as well. So I picked this up. It's, um, as you can see, it is very, very light. Now there's a lot of light here today, so I'm looking very pale, but like this is too pale for my skin tone. Um, it's a very, very pink undertone. Um, and it is just a shade too pale for me. So, um, you get quite a lot of product. You get 14 grams and it retails for, I think the pan is about $20 or something like that, roughly. So the first thing I notice about this foundation is that it is quite, um, what would you say? It's quite uh, what I would call stiff in the pan. It's, it, it's very, it's quite difficult to pick up the product. Um, now it is very cold at the moment so these kind of oily waxy foundations certainly would go quite hard but this is almost turning into candle grease um i've just picked it up there and you can see how white and light that is on my finger so it immediately you're you know you're maybe going to have a slight problem picking some of this up to actually apply it to your face in the first place um you could warm it up a bit i use the damp sponge to apply it there's no way you're going to get that on a brush um, and blend that with a brush when it's so hard. Um, if it was warmer, it would probably uh, blend a little bit easier. So I used a damp sponge to pick it up. Um, applied very nicely, gives very nice coverage. Um, slightly, I think, slightly cakey in appearance, I found. Now, the fact that it was quite pale may have accentuated that. But I think if you have any irregular texture on your skin, um, this may highlight it a bit, so I would be a little bit wary of that. I used a very thin layer of it and just built it up then in areas where I needed it. I was able to get quite a nice finish, but it did take a little bit of work to do to to achieve that uh, because it, it will initially cling to your pores a little bit and you do have to work it in. So generally, though, know, it was quite a nice foundation. Um, didn't particularly make my skin oily, but I certainly would have had to powder it 
after I applied it and did need to powder it during the day as well. So overall, I'd say a very nice cream foundation, certainly not as good as the Cryolan. Um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be rushing out to buy this again. Maybe if I got it in a more suitable shade, um, it might look a lot better on my skin. So about six, six point five, seven out of 10 for, for this product. Um, secondly, then the cover FX. Uh, this one I got in Harvey Nichols in Dublin and it was, I think, about 35, between 35 and 40 euro. And it is 30, 12 grams, so slightly less than the Makeup Designery Foundation and considerably more expensive. This is a product that is designed for, you know, where you need a lot of coverage. So it's, they talk about, you know, covering birthmarks, um, serious redness, uh, that sort of thing. So it is kind of a heavy duty, high coverage foundation, which is not normally what I would really go for, but I just kind of wanted to try it out and see. So I bought it a while ago and the shade is E20, which is a neutral shade. And I'm just trying to kind of give you some idea of what it is like. It's a pretty good match for my skin, actually, because it does have that sort of neutral, neutral tone to it, and it's not too light. Now, again, this is slightly easier to pick up than the Makeup Designery one, but it is still pretty stiff in the pan. It's still quite waxy. And there you go there. So you, it, it's very pigmented. Um, it's a very pigmented product. Um, very creamy. I was sort of surprised at this because when I used it first ages ago and I bought it, I thought, oh, you know, I didn't like it. I thought it looked really, really mask-like on my face. But I think if you use a damp sponge and really blend it in nicely, a very thin layer at a time, you can probably get a quite a reasonably natural look. It is not going to look as natural as um, a liquid foundation. It is certainly not going to look as natural as, say, something like the Eve Pearl um, or even the Cryolan um, because it is designed for major coverage. So it does have a lot of pigment and, you know, it's it's probably... It's probably uh, not really designed for people who just want sheer coverage. This is just not the right product for you, if that's what you're after. What did impress me about this was, of the four that I'm reviewing now for you today, this was the one that caused the least problem with oiliness. My skin was quite, um, really quite manageable for the whole day with this uh, foundation. It definitely didn't make my um make my skin uh, particularly oily and i think that's really a great uh, facet of this product because i can imagine this would be the sort of thing that maybe somebody with acne scarring or um redness from acne would want to use and those are the very sort of people who are not going to want to be shiny and oily because they'll be probably oily enough as it is so for that reason i would say if you've got acne scars or you've got acne you want to cover up I wouldn't be afraid of using this. I think it would certainly suit your skin quite well. So I'd give that an 8 out of 10. Um, the drawbacks for me would be the price and just slightly heavier, um, a slightly heavier coverage than I would be used to or would want. But I would probably use this up, I'd say. I'm, I'm going to really try and experiment to get a, quite a, a much more sheer appearance with it if I can. And I will use this up. Um, I probably won't buy it again, though.